Okay, so hi Zan, I'm very happy to have you here on this channel and yeah, have a little interview with you. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Zan Perian is uh, an internationally recognized as one of the most insightful voices on relationships and seduction in the world today. Uh, he's also a regular media commentator. Uh, he's been featured widely interna in an international press. Zan is the founder of Ars Amorata Philosophy, a celebration of the art of seduction, the rebirth of romance, and the lifelong quest for beauty and adventure. He's also co-founder of the Amorati Network of Men, and he has written the book called The Alabaster Girl, which I've read like, I think, two or three times, and it's been so inspirational. And it's not like a book that you just read through. It's like you, you read one page and there's already so much going in and like processing. Um, and this is also what I kind of associate with you, like this thing about adventure, like this deep spirit of like understanding life, understanding nature, understanding women, understanding the dynamics of relationships. Um, so welcome on this channel. And uh, yeah, so great to have you here. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's, a, it's an interesting thing you said that, you know, that I have a deep understanding of life or, you know, this kind of thing. And I'm just a guy. I have no illusions about myself. You know, I, I've studied women for a heck of a long time. And I have a great understanding of that. And uh, but life itself, I'm you know I'm I'm writing books and I'm trying to understand the philosophy of life myself, just like anybody. So, but thank yeah. you for the nice introduction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, from your point of view, like just some words, like who are you, Zen? Oh, mm, like I said, I'm a I'm a guy that likes that was lost and lonely when I was young. And I like girls. And uh, so I dedicated my life to the, to try and understand the hearts and minds of women. And I spent my entire life doing that. And I wrote a book about it called The Alabaster Girl. And now I sit and I think. I sit in my studio in Bucharest. And I look out the window and I think. And I spend time. Uh, I'm writing a second book. And um, that's essentially who I am. <laughs> and you know, and and I'm I'm a simple guy. I'm a, I, if anybody asks me, I'm just a writer. I'm trying to be a writer. I'm not a very good writer because I don't write a lot. I'm not very prolific. But if if somebody said what what or who are you? What is this guy? I would say I'm a writer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, being a writer, I have a famous quote that I, not a famous, but it's uh, just one that really struck with me from your book. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, this channel is called Embody Authenticity, and it's all, all about authenticity and truth. And this um, quote really talks about it. Okay. The only comments I can only give, and you're talking to a woman there, the only comment I can honestly give is to be fully present, fully engaged, fully real. I promise to stay true to myself and to never misrepresent. This, my love, is the only way a relationship can last. Mm. Hmm. And as you're letting this sink in, I think this is really, it takes so much courage to really follow that and not want to jump ahead and say this and then like, I need safety. I need this to be clear. I need this to be that way. I need to be that way. But allowing yourself to just be really true. What is yeah. the truth of this encounter? What's the truth of this relationship? And can I stay in the beauty of this truth rather than trying make, to make this something else than what it is in this moment? Yeah, I mean, we make long, I wrote in the book, we make long-term promises and short-term feelings. And the problem is we, we change. Things change. And we, we, we get in a relationship and we promise forever. And then she changes and we change inevitably. And unless you have tools and mechanisms and communication to weather through that it people drift apart you know so we can't make promises we really cannot and say i promise i'm 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 not going to break this i'll be with this forever because we're human human nature so exactly. but that phrase is saying in the book is i promise that i will be true to every minute of my honesty with you and in my mo and honesty to myself i'll be that mm. guy so I guess that's kind of the, the tone of of the spirit of that of that quote that you read, yeah. Exactly. 
And it's also much more uh, worth to be true to what is really true, because then I can be fully there, rather than promising something which I cannot, cannot fully truly hold or like um, follow up on. Well, our then- intentions are great. And, you know, we do, we very much want to, we very, we do mean it when we say, I promise you this, I promise that this, we 100% believe that and 100% are honest about it. We're sincere, but life, uh, you know, has uh, other plans and, and, and the universe has, you know, other plans and things change. And before you know it, she's not as, as connected to us, to you as you once was or vice versa. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, one other quote I really loved is authenticity is the only truly seductive thing in this world. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting. Huh? Authenticity is a word I don't use anymore. Mm. <laughs> and and the yeah, reason because- is it's it's uh it's because I mean 20 years ago and 10 years ago when I was writing the books I've had yeah but now i don't use it so much anymore not because it's a it's a bad concept but the word has been absconded by all kinds of self-help gurus and energies and even the word energy is is devoid of meaning nowadays because we use it for everything and authenticity yeah. like this big thing oh auth- be your true self be be yourself be authentic and everybody nods their head but it's an overused phrase yeah and, and you know so i try and avoid the Voided, but the idea with that is that to honesty, which is a word we're not using, which I think can stand in in place of authenticity, honesty to yourself and honesty to others, is a magnificent thing. And authenticity, or you know, uh, honesty is the only truly attractive thing in this world. To be truly honest with yourself, mm-hmm. and everything. yeah, yeah, and also even I think one big process in that is really to find that honesty or the truth within yourself right. because there's so many things that we think um we want them or we think that are coming from our core and our truth maybe there are just some some needs that we haven't fulfilled that's right yeah yeah, yeah i mean so yeah so i mean like that's you know to ask yourself every day what, what it is who you are and what do you want what do you want your life to look like is a magnificent powerful thing you know aristotle said the only life worth living is one of of contemplation contemplation is the highest activity he said like and, and i completely concur with that i think if we spend our life in contemplation contemplating our role as men mm-hmm. our role in this world what we want for a career how we want how we want to be dressed what do we want to look like in the future if we do that we spend our life in contemplation of that we will be shocked at how life unfolds for us that's my entire thesis on that yeah Mm, yeah um one other quote that really struck with me was every great life Mm. has had in it a great renunciation yeah and i'm a bit curious about this quote like where maybe what is your renunciation or what do you really want to say with that because it really struck with me when i first read it i was like well, what's my renunciation? And I kind of had some ideas around it, but it was more like a process that was unfolding. And I'm curious about your process and also what you mean. Like, what do you want to yeah. talk to them? The well, the, that phrase, when I was writing my book, The Alabaster Girl, I went to, um, I thought, man, I'm busy traveling, public speaking and doing all this kind of stuff. And there's all kinds of great things happening, but my book wasn't progressing. So I said, I need to be thrown in jail or put on a deserted island somewhere for for three months to so that I can work on this thing. And another year went by and I'm still traveling and doing various things and wasn't working on the book so often. And so I artificially put myself on a deserted island. I went to Nicaragua. I disappeared from the internet. I disappeared from civilization uh, or, you know, modern civilization. I went and lived in the small fishing village in Nicaragua. and I had I had a hammock and I had a, a fish every day and I and I and I worked on the book. And when I came out of there, and the people there that I saw in Nicaragua had nothing. And they were so full of light and joy and happiness and in living in the moment that I'm thinking, man, you we in the West are all burdened with all our troubles. And these and 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 the people here in this village that you know I'm, 
a big wind can come along and knock over their 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 habitat and they just build it again and, mm-hmm. and they were happy the young children were playing in the sand and they were happy and the and i thought you know so it really affected me a lot and i realized so that that phrase came out of that visit to nicaragua and i came in out of there to amsterdam and i did a big weekend intensive and the guys are sitting around in the weekend intensive saying you know you, you i have approach anxiety and all this kind of and i'm thinking it's there's it it's real but it's there's entire things out there that we're, we're doing small incremental changes and so so my whole thing was um that phrase came to me every great life has had in it a great renunciation and by that i mean that the small self-helping things we're doing affirmations on our mirror and putting up our vision board and um facebook quotes that are that are that inspire us it's not enough it's it's mm. we're going through all these motions and we're all taught all these things and we have all this self-help mentality in our spirit but we're missing something fundamental and that fundamental thing is we're not really colliding with the earth and charging into life and so every great life is having great renunciation in other words everything that is not working for you whether it's your your work or that your chosen career or your family is keeping you small or your friends are are, are not um um inspiring you've got to cast it all aside and leave it behind that's the truth you really have mm. to just cast it away uh, yes but I, I i studied to be a, you know a, a dentist you know, and i put all this money into it yes and cast it away if it isn't fulfilling you it has to go mm. and so it's real and it's uh it's uh this feeling that you have to renounce and all the great lives that i've ever examined or thought about they had a turning point where they said no more no mm. more and they walked away from they renounced everything and they walked mm. away and uh and i and i kind of had this idea that a man should reinvent himself every decade should be a new new thing you're trying for a decade new new clothes you're wearing for a decade you know what i mean mm-hmm. something like that mm-hmm. so so what right. was what was your renunciation then well i renounced the corporate world and i renounced okay. that possessions 100 i i i quit my very good cushy corporate job i gave all my possessions away and i reduced myself down to a carry-on bag and one pair of shoes and I hit the road and I said, I'm going to figure this out if it kills me. And so mm-hmm. my renunciation was, was that modern sa- safety. You know, uh, Tennessee Williams said that security is a kind of death. And so I renounced that security mm. into the wind. Maybe it struck me so much because I've also studied the engineering originally. Now mm-hmm. I'm going way more into embodiment, coaching and, yeah. and all kinds of things. And and I just felt like the power in in just, you know, letting go of whatever doesn't serve you, but do it fully and not whole and a little half-heartedly. Yeah, and you know, and it's it's we hear this message over and over and over again because we're so, like I said, we're so steeped in self-help and self-development messages and books and programs and stuff. And we all kind of nod our head and kind of say, yeah, I get it but nobody's really doing anything that you know really strong i'm generalizing of course it's like really fundamentally like saying i can't i will not abide with this anymore in my life i will i will quit this job that doesn't serve me yes it pays excellent money and you know and 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 uh but it it doesn't feel like my heart and so um or relationships mm. like well you know yeah so one thing I would love to talk about with you is that there is, you talk a lot about beauty mm-hmm. and then you talk about upper and lower energy. Mm-hmm. And um, I feel like sometimes people might confuse that you're so much talking about like lo- uh, beauty and love and appreciation and all that. And then that there's this also this kind of like polarity, especially when when you're interacting with women that there's some kind of like polarity that is also a very dirty aspect 
Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, I'm curious about if you could elaborate a little bit on these terms like beauty and then um, lower and higher, uh, uh, yeah, higher, upper end and lower energy. Well, beauty is not soft. You know, beauty is a very real physical thing as in physics, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, beauty is not sensitive. And because what we would think is soft or sensitive is really sentimentality and kitsch, kitsch in art, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, beauty is not kitsch. Beauty has depth, has sadness in it, has, has, um, contains all these things. And, um, and so beauty is, is the, is the upper and lower energy. It is the, 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 the sacred and the profane mixed together. It is both. It mm -hmm. has elements of both. It's not, we think beauty is all enlightening and, and elevating and angelic and it's also dirty and so what we're missing as men in this modern age is that um that lower moving energy which is our desire to bend the world over our our thrusting nature you could say our our, our sexual drive which we need for for building cities we need it for building Uh, for in, interventions in innovation, uh, science, we need it for understanding our role in the cosmos, uh, all these things. Uh, we as men need this thrusting energy. And in the modern age, we're taught that in this modern society, we're, we're taught that our thrusting sexual energy is a toxic thing. Mm. So, um, which is a lie. It's a, it's a hundred percent pure lie. Mm -hmm. You know, and my whole crusade and my whole book and my and the, all the books I'm writing and all, everything I'm trying to create and everything I stood on this earth to say is that's wrong. And men are, are only listening to the upper energy things, which is curiosity, kindness, aliveness, complimenting, um, respect, all these great energetic things on the masculine spirit that are upper energy, but they're neglecting the lower energy, which is our real desire to to protect, to to battle, to save, the, the, to protect the things we love, to our danger, our dark forest, our desire to, to our, our thrusting nature, our desire to bang in the whole world. Mm -hmm. And we're trying to, and we're dishonoring that. And, and this modern age is saying that's wrong and it's toxic and it's not. So that's yeah, kind of a quick thesis on that. Mm -hmm. And what I find, um, what I find also kind of interesting about the topic is that There's so much encouragement about the upper energy in our society and so much discouragement about the lower energy, which then creates such a disbalance and um, in men and in women that we are, we are very comfortable in, you know, like um, working on our, say, upper energy, but yes. really not comfortable about working on our lower energy. Correct. And we condemn it in ourselves or society condemns it. And we get completely... Um, Yeah, like we get into this this balance, and yeah. then stuff like um, like Me Too and 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 all this kind of stuff happens, and we're even more afraid to go into yes. the lower energy. But it would need to be there in order to for all of this to be safe, for all of this to be really um, grounded, for all of this to be um, like balanced. It's a complete like modern society in the media and education has failed it's a failure and it's 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 destroyed something vital and that is the heart of the spirit of of masculine energy the heart of men and it, you know and and that's why there's these new concepts new new things that are happening in the world because young men have given up and they and they feel like there's no hope and so there's these concepts like um incels they're being called incels and um school shootings and suicides are happening because young men have nowhere to turn and they're ta they're taught since they're little boys that you having a penis is is the problem mm -hmm. and, uh and so and and, and so it, it's a real disservice and a real crime actually that's happening it's a sin and so mm -hmm. so the whole thesis is that there is no messages for men today And so the you know the messages that are out there now are becoming these really strong, aggressive, um, take back the power type of of messages. 
Mm-hmm. And young men are flocking to the to to those voices. They're flocking to it because there's nobody else saying anything, and they have no father figure to look up to. Mm-hmm. So somebody gives them hope, and somebody says, "This, you know, I'm on your side." They run to it because they were taught since they're from school and media that you're you're, you're toxic because you're going to turn into a toxic man, and so they're running for any kind of uh, hope. Mm-hmm. Because yeah yeah and i feel this is really i think this is probably one of the biggest pieces for men to integrate in in today's world again and i'm curious uh if you could talk a little bit about as a man how can you develop each of this like the upper and the lower energy and maybe before you do that could you define because some people might not even understand what are we talking about could you define what does that mean what is upper energy what is lower energy why is that you know different and how can we develop each of them well, my thesis that I wrote in the book is that a man is integrated and whole when he has an upper moving energy that starts from his center of gravity, moves up into the world. That's a, that's a, a, a beautiful energy for men. That's respect. That's kindness. That's that's honor. That's um, that's being you know generous. That's being funny. That's being interesting or interested in curiosity. All these great upper energy moving things. That's it's a loving, know, right? Like yeah, loving, it's right. embracing. Yeah, it's it's a it's a kind-hearted openness, and at the same time, from the same center of gravity, there's a lower moving energy that comes from the heart and from the spirit of man, and this lower moving energy is blocked and cast aside by modern society, and that lower energy, like I said, is the desire to thrust into the world, the desire to penetrate women. And the desire to, that, that loves the asses of women, loves that there's women in this world, loves that we're sexual creatures, loves the honor of that, um, loves that God created us as sexual beings, and our our desire to to like I said to protect, to destroy, if necessary, and our danger and our dark force and and modern society today. And imagine this: all the dating, all the dating um, advice out there is how to maximize your upper energy, how to be more charming, how to be more curious, how to be more uh, be more funny, how to, you know, take Toastmasters and 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 do stand-up improv, learn improv so that you become more of a charmer, you become more of this upper energy thing, which is great. And women like those charmers and they and they and they, and they like to laugh with them and, and 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 spend time with them, but they're not viscerally attracted to them on a deep level. And so the lower moving energy is blocked and it's toxic according to the world and so we 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 hide the fact that we that we also like to bang girls and it's a beautiful thing and they want to feel that energy from us and so um so the whole thesis is we've got to reclaim both of those and guys will spend their lives trying to maximize their charm and their humor and and being a conversationalist and all these great upper energy things but the women are not lusting after them they're not dreaming about them they're not playing with themselves and thinking about that guy mm. so and if you're only the lower energy and you don't have the respect and charm and kindness and and you know then you're the the aggressive chauvinistic asshole um you, you're you're the quote-unquote the pig you know and you don't mm. want to be that either so you need a balance of both and the modern man does not have the balance mm. that's that's the whole thing mm. and could you um, elaborate a bit on what is the gift as a man to live that upper energy and to live that lower energy and what's the gift for the woman to receive that uh, women need to feel this for men and this is why there's so much disdain for men that's why women are saying where's the real man not those guys those are not real men and you get these sensitive nice guys who are calling themselves feminists um, and you think what and and testosterone is falling off the charts you know and women are are starved women are women are having an aggressive time right now and an angry time and there's really in the heart of the female spirit in the modern age there's a real aggression and a real anger and a real frustration that is that is a reflection of the weakness of men in my mind mm-hmm. for certain so um so women are waiting for that. And it doesn't mean we're going back to a patriarchal model 
where the you know the man is always right and there's no collaboration or, or honor if the, the feminine spirit and the feminine grace is is equal but different to the masculine spirit and the masculine grace but it's an equal partner it's an equal say it's an equal uh decision maker it's just as wise and just as intelligent as anything that can come out, uh, from the man's side and so but we've lost that balance it's completely imbalanced and the and the ang- women are angry at the men and the men are angry at the women and they're lashing out and everyone's ki- you know killing themselves with suicide because mm. right? there's no good messages so mm. and i think what's really the gift in all that is that in in the upper energy is this like this loving caring funny high higher energy yeah. that gives this beautiful I know this beautiful energy around a relationship or around the relating. And then the lower energy gives this kind of like this, um, this mystery to it. Lord, like yes, this, mystique. Uh, this mystique about it's like, Whoa, what's happening? And, and guys will read my some adventure going on. Guys will read my book and they'll say, wow. And they're reading their wow. Zan talks about complimenting women and, and the women, the beauty of the female spirit and curiosity and aliveness. And they read this and they say, man, that's really good. I'm doing that. I already compliment women and, and they become nicer, nice guys. Mm. Um, because they only read the top half of my book, which is all these great upper energy things. And they disregard completely the, 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 the darker, dirtier elements that I'm talking about that a man needs to have in his heart and his spirit. And they disregard mm. that. They read the upper energy things and they say, I'm yeah, Zan validated me. And they become this nicer, nice guy. And mm-hmm. it's wrong. And, and I mean, the book I'm writing now is a, is a corrective to that. It's not a. It's not a. It's it's basically going to. It's going to be a shakeup for men. What I'm writing now. So <laughs> mm, curious about that. Yeah. Um. What has been interesting is in in my whole journey of like exploring relationships and relating with women and and and, and these upper and lower energies. One guy that was really helping me path was Brian Brian Bagan uh, yeah. Beijing. And he was talking a lot about the energetics of it, like grounding, feeling, sure. and also sexual energy and like tension and, and all these like concepts in the body to start to feel and understand what is happening inside of my body. How does that lower energy, that thrusting energy that like, you know, penetrates, how does that feel in my body? And then yeah. how can I open my heart? How does that feel in my body? And I'm curious about you because you said you like you grew up in, in the wilderness as yeah. a as a as a boy and then you came into the city and you were really like you, you the only education you had was like watching movies uh from yeah. hollywood this was like how to in, to relate with the other sex right and then yeah. and then i'm curious because there was also no people out there talking about these dynamics and so i'm curious and then you said you were just like listening at the feet of women but how did you understand this dynamic these two different you know level this higher and this lower thing no one talks about it you haven't learned it from someone else how no. did you you know and embo- learn to embody that how did it happen because many guys they're running around for years for decades and they're never gonna embody that and you did so i'm curious about that well i have a i have a insatiable curiosity and, and since i was 16 years old i said i'm gonna f- i liked girls i liked women I said, I'm going to figure this out. I want to know. And I went through all my 20s. There was no internet. There was no coaches. There was no dating-related information anywhere out there. And um, and I wanted to know. I dedicated my entire life to the, the study of this dynamic, of the, of, the, of the hearts and minds of women, like I said. And... Uh, and I have never done anything. Like, I, I know Brian very well. He's come to Romania many times. He's done a lot of coaching. Um, I've spoken to his his groups all the time. We have a lot of cross pollination, and he does teach guys how to get out of their head and into their body. Embodiment work, I guess you could say, right? Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about that. I don't know how to do that. I've never meditated in my life. Mm-hmm. I don't know anything about I don't know anything about chakras. I don't know anything about tantra. Nothing. Um, I never learned any of that stuff. And and yet you embody it yet you embody right. it and this is the curiosity that i have yeah, there you but, know? It's, but it's because of like the the slow cooked hard earned peeling back the onion skins of understanding 
and it, it it's homegrown. My knowledge and my understanding. If I if I say something about upper lower and energy, and you've never read it or heard about that anywhere on earth before, because I never have read it or heard it from anywhere. The book I'm writing it now, and even now that the girl, eighty percent, ninety percent, I've never seen or heard anybody say it. It's highly original because it came out of this this hard won, hard fought for experience, mm. and so and so the things that Brian talks about these guys that embodiment stuff at i get it but i've never experienced it i don't know it so mm -hmm. he, uh it just came from decades of struggle and uh and 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 not only that but not just struggling and but not giving up and just mm -hmm. saying thing you know I, I was asked fairly recently a guy asked me you know when you went through all that rejection in your in your late teens and 20s and stuff like that and you were you you would go out and you're always alone and you're always lonely. Did you ever think about giving up? Which, and the question shocked me when I really thought about it because I had to really contemplate that because there was never once in all those years that I ever thought about giving up. I said, I'm gonna figure this out. And I was heartbroken and crying and trying and not understanding it. And I said, I'm gonna solve this somehow someday. I'm gonna keep going. So I kept going, and the difference between me. And somebody else who doesn't get that understanding after trying for many years is they give up. I never gave up. I kept going. Mm -hmm. I'm going to figure this out. I want to know. I want to understand women. I want to know my role in, in the hearts and minds of women. And I want to know what women are thinking. Mm -hmm. and, and I became the best at that that I know. Mm -hmm. Because I never give up. This is one thing uh, that really fascinates me about you that I feel that you are original because you just went mm. on your own quest to understand and to feel inside of your own heart and your own body and your own core what is happening um with me and all these women and the world like how can i interact there like what is how does it work and you always like you somehow develop this ability to really listen listen to the truth inside of yourself and there's so many other people they just say yeah. what other people have said and um that's the yeah, real I difference no I, I read nothing i had no coaches of any kind in my entire life I had no teachers and i never learned anything that i say in the alabaster girl or any of my public speaking for 20 years i never learned it from anybody else ever not a drop of it exactly. except for experience yeah i never took any training from anybody that's yeah. true <laughs> incredible man yeah but I'm, a, also oh, I'm a believer i believe in this I believe that there's a way forward and I believe in young men mm -hmm. and I believe that there's a, there's a, there's, I have a lot of hope. I have a lot of, I'm, I'm a hopeful spirit for young men. If they're just not getting a good message, that's all. Mm -hmm. And you know what I find interesting? Like when you're talking about, when we're, when you're talking about the book or about anything that you've learned, um, I feel even, even as someone that is learning, it's always about, you know, unlocking a truth inside of myself that is easier for me to see as I'm reading it in a book, as I'm experiencing it with someone else, whatever. Like, this is always just unlocking a truth inside of me. And I feel like many people in, in, in our world today, they have lost this ability to really deeply listen inside of themselves and really find that own wisdom and truth inside. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like we're bombarded by feel-good quotes and self-help, and um, I think the best self-help you can you can do is literature to read stories of the past and literature of the past, and and travel. <laughs> That's your best self-help you can do right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and um, it's not enough. Like I said, every everything every great life has had in it, a great renunciation. It's not enough just to consume the next program or the weekend intensive or um or book it's not enough mm -hmm. it's got to take everything and what i found also fascinating is that whenever we succeed in really listening and really connecting to that truth um oftentimes it just just flows much more naturally it has much more impact for example one uh, one video that is uh, really successful on this channel it just came down as an idea inside of myself it's like okay this is how i want to do it like, it's about releasing and emotional releasing and suddenly yeah. like i had this like it came up inside of myself how to do it and then i and i kind of created this piece and it was coming from the core and it starts to just 
work in the world and it sh- starts to be recognized because it is truth it is unique it is this beauty that you're talking about it's coming like i feel and that's a curious i'm curious about uh, you this just came up i feel curious uh, sorry beauty is created out of truth in a sense like out of like this inner um like it's not copying this thing from something else or whatever like it's emerging from somewhere inside of someone or something and not like i don't know copied well, what do you what do you think about it well yeah i mean like i think beauty is is unique in that i really do think that beauty is is supreme in other words uh beauty is a founding metaphysical energy that you know when the world was universe was created whether it was a big bang started it or a prime mover created it at that moment beauty was created and i think beauty is a real thing and so mm-hmm. i think beauty stands alone and apart from everything else and we either we either pay attention to it or we don't in this modern age we don't we don't we we've cast it aside in art in architecture in relationships in politics we've cast aside any desire for beauty in fact beauty is is has been actively cast aside in place of ugliness you look at the way artists want to shock you now as opposed to to representing something you know transcendent and uh so uh i just i think that i have my own ideas about beauty <laughs> i'm writing a book about it and mm-hmm. I don't know the answer to beauty. If I if if all the artists and scientists and physicists and poets in this in the history of the world couldn't define beauty, then I certainly can't. Mm-hmm. But I but I can certainly take a stab at it in my best way I can, you know. Mm-hmm. So I, mm-hmm. I think there was once this quote that you said, um, nothing that is no, if it is I said, if it is not true, it's not beautiful, or something like that. Yes, beauty is truth. Truth is beauty. That was that was Keats said that, you know. And the Greeks used to have this idea that beauty was a was a, a supreme ideal. It was a real thing, like harmony, like truth, uh, beauty. Um, all these, you know, you know, they used to believe in these universal truths, which we've cast aside, and so beauty is truth and like you said you said at the beginning of this question was um truth beauty evolves from truth or comes from truth but i think it's the other way around i think truth comes from beauty beauty is, is supreme mm. it's, it's prime it's my mm. that's my delusion mm, okay beautiful mm. um yeah like i i really love all these um like I think everyone has their own special thing that they're so like you know moved by or like you know fueled by, and yeah. I really feel that the thing thing for you is beauty, and the funny thing for me that is truth. So I'm trying to relate everything <laughs> to truth, and you're trying to relate everything to beauty. <laughs> That's cool. I mean, like it's the same. It's it's the same thing, really. I mean, like we're we're both seekers, you know. And if you're a seeker, yeah. you come to this. You come to the same overlapping conclusions in the future you could someone can go down the path of trying to find you know determine what justice is mm-hmm. and if they continue to be dedicated to the journey of trying to understand justice in a, in a good way they're going to encounter truth and they're going to encounter beauty these mm-hmm. are universals mm-hmm. so, so th- there's no difference it's just that uh my whole thing is beauty to me is everything and beauty is 100 percent my focus that's that's it restoring beauty is is my 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 company my philosophy is called ars amarata mm. which you know it you know and the subtitle is restoring beauty or beauty mm. so mm-hmm. yeah yeah and i loved also what you said about the seeker i really feel that that is um in essence what what moves what moves you forward in life like being a seeker yes and and you will always have a lens and I have this lens of truth. Like I'm seeking truth and you have this lens of beauty. And I feel it's, it's, it's magical. If you see what is that thing that I'm seeking and you're seeing that I'm a seeker, I'm on this adventure. I'm yes. on this exploration of that. What matters yeah, to me. Take that life. away from you. You're a student of life and no one can say, no, you're not. 
you know, you're yeah, as yeah. honorable as anybody's ever lived because you're trying to understand your role in this earth to be more excellent, to understand things. And you are the student of life. You are a seeker. And it's it. And, and when you recognize that it, you have all the conviction in the world you ever need. You have all the surety you ever need because you don't have any answers, but you are a seeker <laughs> that you know that for exactly, sure. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And you you would probably never gave up because of that, because you are a seeker that just this energy comes inside of you. Like it, it's it's kind of created in I the guess. in the seeking, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, that's that's truth. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Um, I think we're we're um, slowly closing down on it. I'll just uh, down on the interview. I'm okay. curious. Are there some, some thoughts you you wanted to share before we head over to like the ending? No, I'm just, uh, I'm in the process of writing a second book and the third book. I've got them both going kind of at once mm -hmm. and I'm going to fight for them this year, at least the second book. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I hope it, it, it captures the, the zeitgeist and where we are nowadays mm -hmm. and says something about that without any kind of self-help feel or any kind of, um coaching type of energy in it it's just a commentary on how we view life that's what i'm trying to write <laughs> so mm -hmm. i'm excited about that and uh you know yeah yeah I'm very excited about it too yeah yeah <laughs> so and then, on day and night till i get it done and what about the third book do you, do you want to say anything about that the third Instead book is more of a reflection on what hath god wrought in other words man you see see all this stuff you see the the way the world's going and it's just more of a philosophical reflection that's a, that's what i've been writing mm. and that's coming next and i want to get these done i get these books out of my system and get it done mm -hmm. i'm done writing or i'm done writing these two books and then yeah as it always takes forever to to just finish finally finally finish yeah you just argue with your work like i poke at my my manuscript like it's a dead animal and i'm poking with a stick mm -hmm. you're like you're trying to get life out of it and if you just i just have to stick with it and get it done <laughs> mm. however like you said you you were writing for 10 years on this first book the alabaster girl and uh if you haven't if you haven't read it you should definitely read it uh -huh. because it's so deep and you just feel that there's so much you know refining that's that's been you know been ha been made there and it just is so clear and wow. i really feel that that's a beautiful um you know testament to really taking time um to create a piece of art yeah that's, that's great really, that's, this really happened yeah. there it took me a long time <laughs> and uh as i was traveling and like i said and talking and speaking stuff out and i shaped this book and i look at it now and i've never read the book since i since i since i published it except except that i i did for when i read the audiobook which is a, a few years ago i read the audiobook and that's the only time i'd ever opened the book again mm. and uh, it was hard for me to read because I'm, I'm this perfectionist i want to change everything but mm -hmm. um yeah but when i look that book just really it really it came from it, it's it's strange to say but it came from something else like it, it's there's some things i that that i that i read in there and i'm thinking man I, I don't know how to write that i don't know how i wrote that mm. so, yeah, yeah you're sure. tapping into something deeper that's kind of like sure. yeah acting no, through question. You. no question no question and yeah. you know anybody from homer who wrote you know the iliad and the odyssey said mm -hmm. the same thing mm. I, I i have no words to myself as the opening line of the iliad i need i need a muse to to speak through me because i got nothing i got nothing mm. i got nothing to say Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. yeah. there's also a new project that you have uh, because i've seen recently if you do you want to talk about that well we did the the well, we this little tour uh i worked with jan bislin and jonathan chan we're both canadians they both live in romania here and they are some world-class violinists and music producers and they have a a, a, a super group that is called momento mm -hmm. look them up momento sounds on on instagram um and they are they wrote a soundtrack to the book or they're writing a soundtrack to the book the alabaster girl there's nine chapters and they're writing nine songs 
that their interpretation of the feel of it. And so we took it on the road. We did it our first, uh, you know, we did a, a, an evening called Dreams of an Alabasta Girl. And it's mm-hmm. two hours long or so. And it's me talking for four or five minutes about, you know, chapter one and how the book was titled and the, behind the scenes of how it was written and the concept of the chapter. And then their musical interpretation thereof, their soundtrack uh, piece that goes to chapter one. And then we did chapter two. I talk and they do it. We did that in Bucharest and we te- as a test. We did it in Zurich where I saw you just recently. Mm-hmm. And it was fantastic. And it was in its... It's reinvigorating my public speaking, and I love it. It's more of a, a, a show. We're doing it more mm. of a, a production, a show. It's like a piece of art yeah. in and a musical wanna, and writing. And our plan is to take it on the road uh, as as a show, as a, as a, as a labor of love, and, um, and do a European tour and do a North American tour. And we're just looking at that now. We're having a conversation. When, should, when are we, can we do this? So let's do it. So it's fun, and it's interesting, and... It honors the the musicality of these guys because my book, The Alabaster Girl, is very musical, musically written. You know, mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah, yeah. To anyone who has a chance to to watch it, I would highly yeah. recommend it. It was really powerful, like combining this like poetic nature of the book with this with the quality of the sound and uh, this this piece of art that is created in the merging of like the 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 writing and the music. It was just magical. That's great, man. Yeah. And you were there. <laughs> yes. Anything else that you want uh, to say for people wanting to reach out to you, maybe for coaching or for whatever? Uh, no, just come to zanperion.com. I'm easy to find. Follow me on Instagram, zanperion. Uh, I'm starting to use social media now. I wasn't really using it before. Uh, so follow me. I'm on that new threads thing too. And okay. uh, and yeah, just uh, I'm easy to find. And I'm going to start putting out more uh content on these social media and if you want private coaching i don't do it very much anymore because i'm trying to write but for the right targeted uh situation uh and you need a gunslinger that comes in and solves your problem you got a particular situation with a girl and you really need uh you know someone that has been there and, and knows what your next steps are and what your next thing you should do or say is then maybe i'd be interested in, in working with you so reach out to me at zanperian.com Perfect. I will link all these links in the description of the video oh, yeah. as well. Uh, thank you very much for for being on this interview, for being on the channel, um, and for channeling your wisdom into the world. Um, so thank you so much for being well, here. Well, thanks for having me. This has been great. Yeah, thanks. Okay, take care, man. <laughs>